What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp Essentials tutorial for you. In today's video, we're going to quickly create a basic house using the push, pull, and offset tools in SketchUp. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So to start off, we're going to draw the footprint of our house. Now in order to do that, the first thing you can do is you can delete out this default model. And the way that we're going to draw the footprint of our house is we're going to make it a very simple house, and we're just going to draw it using the rectangle tool. So what you're going to do is you're going to activate the rectangle tool by tapping the R key, and then coming in here and clicking once to set a corner point. And you can see how if you look in the corner, down in the measurements bar, you can see how as I move my mouse, the dimensions that it has in here change. So that's showing you how big your rectangle is. Well, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to create a 20 foot by 10 foot rectangle by typing in 20 foot comma 10 foot and hitting the enter key. So that'll draw your rectangle to the size that you want. You can see how it's 20 feet long, 10 feet wide. So now what we're going to do is we're going to extrude this into 3D using the push pull tool. The push pull tool you can find either by clicking on this little icon over here in the corner or you can activate that by tapping the P key on your keyboard. So click once on this face and you'll notice how when I click on this, it'll extrude this into 3D. And so this works the same way that the rectangle tool did. And then I can come in and I can type in a length that I want to extrude this. So if I type in 10 feet and hit the enter key, this will extrude this face to 10 feet. And then actually I'm going to adjust this house because I don't like how thick it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate around the back side of my model. And you can rotate by clicking and holding your center mouse key if you have a PC. Um, I believe that you can do that by holding both mouse keys on a Mac, but I'm not sure because I don't have a Mac. But we're going to rotate around to the back side and I'm actually going to extrude this probably another five feet. So I just did the same thing that I did before. I activated the push pull tool. I clicked on this face and then I typed in five feet. So now this is a little, um, a little wider. I didn't like how wide it was before, but now that we've got our basic house shape, what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to model our roof. So to model our roof, what we're going to do, there's a few different ways you could do this, but what I'm going to do in this case is I'm just going to come in and I'm just going to find the midpoint of this object and I'm going to draw a line straight up. So in order to do that, you can either click on the little pencil icon or you can tap the L key on your keyboard to activate the line tool. And then move your mouse until you find this little blue dot. That's the midpoint of this line. That means it's the middle of this line and that's where we want to start the base of our roof object. So once you do that, you're going to click once on this piece and you're going to want to move your mouse until this line turns blue. And what that means is that's SketchUp telling you that you're drawing a line that's straight up and down. So you can either move your mouse until the number in the measurements bar is around five feet, or you can just type in five feet and hit the enter key. That'll draw a five foot line straight up and down. Then we're just gonna draw a couple of lines in here to create this face. And you can see how as soon as I have three or more coplanar edges, what SketchUp does is it creates a face in those objects. You can see how it colors this in. Well now all you want to do is you're going to activate the erase tool by, by tapping the E key or you can click on it over here and then you're just going to click on this line. And when you click on this line, SketchUp's going to erase that line. So we're going to go ahead and push pull this object to the back and you can see how this makes that hollow. Don't worry about that for right now. Um, what we're going to do right now is we're going to push pull this object. So tap the P key and click on this face and then move your mouse to the back. And one of the things I want to talk about real quick with the push pull tool is how it inferences. So you can see how when I come back here, I can either click directly on this line, but since you can only push pull this object forward and backward, you're basically setting your length by where you move your mouse. So you can see how as I move my mouse along this face, it's still extruding that object. Well, what I can do is I can click anywhere on this line to tell SketchUp that I want to extrude this along this back line right here. So click anywhere on this line, and then if you rotate around here, 
you can see how this extruded that all the way to your back face and now this lines up exactly with that face. So, and one of the things that you'll notice is the way that we did this is these faces are darker than the other fa faces. That's because every face in SketchUp has a front side and a back side. For whatever reason, SketchUp extruded this with the dark side showing. So all you have to do to fix that is just right click on these and select reverse faces. And you can see how when I reverse these faces, it flips them so the correct side is facing out. And then the other thing you're gonna have to do is you're just gonna have to heal this face. So you can do that by just drawing a line along this edge again, and the SketchUp will draw this face back in. So this is a good start for our object, but what we're gonna want is we're gonna want kind of an eave or an overhang on, this, on our roof. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the offset tool to offset this so that we have an eave shape that we can push pull along this face. And so the offset tool just basically takes any face and it takes the perimeter edges of that face and it'll offset them a certain distance. So in order to activate that, you can either come over and click on the offset tool, which is right here, or you can just tap the F key on your keyboard then all you're gonna do is you're gonna click somewhere along this face and you're gonna move your mouse. And then where you wanna move your mouse is you wanna move it so that it's extru or so that it's offsetting this outward, not inward along our face. So you don't want to extrude it in, you wanna extrude it out. And all you have to do is you can just come in here and you can just type in how far you want this to offset. So in this case, I want this to offset six inches. So, and you can see you get a little bit of leftover down here that you can just erase out. And you can actually come in here now and you can erase out the line that was along this face. But what I'm gonna do is I actually am gonna move my mouse so that I can draw a line along this face right here. And you see how this turns pink? When it turns pink, what it means is that's an extension of this line, so it's at the same angle. And I'm just gonna draw a line along that same angle to about right here. And I'm gonna erase out this extra. I'm gonna do the same thing on this other side. So just draw a line and then erase out this extra. Now what we wanna do is we wanna push pull this forward um, probably about 12 inches. And you can come in here and you can erase out this uh, little remaining line right here. And then you can go to the back side and you may have to heal this face on the back side once you push pull it. But on the back side, you're going to go ahead and extrude that once to this back face, and then you're just going to extrude it again 12 more inches so that you've got that nice overhang. And then you can erase out these extra lines. You may have to come in here and re reverse a couple of these faces again just by right-clicking and clicking reverse faces. So now you've got your basic house with your basic roof shape. It's got an overhang on either side. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna draw our door and a window. So to start off, we're gonna use the rectangle tool to draw our door. So you can see how when I activate the rectangle tool by tapping the R key and I move my mouse, whenever I'm on a face, you can see how um, my little rectangle off of my cursor is turning different colors. That's indicating what axis you're on. So this is automatically orienting this to whatever face you're on. So you can see how when this turns red, it's just showing you that you're drawing it along this face, um, along the red axis. Or if you draw it this way, it turns green. So just move your mouse somewhere along the bottom here along this line, wherever you want to start your door. And then you're just going to use the rectangle tool to draw your door in. And so what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to activate the rectangle tool. We're going to set a base point. And then you're just going to type in 3 foot, comma 8 foot. That'll draw a 3 foot by 8 foot door on the front of your house. And if you wanted to, you could move this over another foot. Make this more of a 4 foot by 8 foot door, um something maybe a little wider because it's a front door or something like that. But now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing that we did with our roof with the offset tool. So we're going to offset this face so that it's got about, we'll call it, we'll call it four inches of trim 
around it. So you can see how I offset that four inches out and that gives you a little trim piece that you can extrude and you can erase out your extra down here. And then all you're gonna do is you're just gonna push pull that a little bit to give it a little bit of depth. So in this case, I'm probably gonna push pull that. I think I like an inch and a half. So I'll just push pull that an inch and a half. And then we'll come over here and we'll do the same thing on this side, we'll draw a window. What we wanna do on this side though is we want the top of this window to align with the top of our door. So we're gonna use the tape measure tool to create a guide. So click on your tape measure tool, and then you're gonna click once on this base, and then you can move your mouse. So you can see how as you move your mouse along this face, this is drawing a guide along that face. So what I wanna do is I wanna activate this, and then I wanna hold the shift key. And when I hold the shift key, that's gonna lock the tape measure tool to this axis, to the, to the blue axis. Then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move my mouse over to the top of this door and you can see what that's doing is since I'm locked along the blue axis now it lets me move my mouse and in inference to another point so it says no matter what as long as I hold the shift key it's gonna draw a guide straight up and down from that point so, so now you're just giving it a height so I'm just gonna click on this door and so what that does is that gives me a line that I can now draw my window off of so and we'll come in here and we'll say this is a we'll call it a six foot wide by four foot high window. So just come in here and just draw this rectangle and we'll say six foot comma four foot and hit the enter key. That'll give you your window over here. And remember in this case, actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw the offset inside instead of outside four inches just because I already drew my guideline to the top of this door frame. The other thing you could do is you could draw your guideline to the bottom of the door frame and then offset this up. But, so in this case, use the offset tool to offset that inside. And then use the push-pull tool to do the same thing. Give this an inch and a half of depth. And that'll just make your window um, a little more realistic looking. So the other thing we can do if we want to is we can draw a chimney. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick a point on this roof and we're gonna use the rectangle tool to draw a chimney. But what you don't wanna do is you can see how we talked before about how this locks to a face. Well, if I do that over here and then I try to push pull this, my chimney is gonna look all funky like this. It's not gonna go straight up and down. But what you can do is naturally what this does is this inferences to this face. But what you can do is you can but you can tap the up key on your keyboard and that'll lock your rectangle tool to the blue axis. So now, no matter where I put it, as long as I tap the up key on my keyboard, it's gonna say, okay, no matter what, we're gonna draw a rectangle along that blue axis. So activate the rectangle tool, tap the up key, and then click somewhere on this face. And you can see how this is kind of inferencing weird but all you need to do is just type in your dimensions again. So three foot comma three foot and hit the enter key and that'll draw a three foot by three foot rectangle over here. Well now, <clears throat> there's a couple different things you can do with this. You can push pull it up and down. So you could push pull it down so that it intersects with your roof if you want to, but I don't really like the way that that does that. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna push pull this up a little bit so it goes up a little bit above my roof. And then I'm just gonna manually draw in the lines. So you can just kind of inference this down. So hold the shift key. So click once to activate the line tool and then you can hold the shift key to lock that along the blue axis and just click on this face. And all I'm doing is I'm just drawing a couple lines that go straight down onto this face. So I'm just kind of filling this in so that it follows the angle of your roof. Then you can erase out these extra lines. So now you've got a chimney in here. If you really wanted to, you could offset this top piece a little bit and push pull this down so that it looks like it's got a little bit more depth. But now you've got a house in here with a chimney. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a little wainscot on the outside. A wainscot is something like if you had like three feet of brick or something like that on the outside of this house, I'm gonna add that really quick um, by using the move tool in copy mode. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click on this bottom face. And what that does is that selects this face and all the connected edges. 
and I'm going to first of all I'm gonna unselect the edges around this door because I've already kind of extruded this trim out but I'm gonna unselect these edges and I'm also gonna unselect the face so all I have is the line selected and then I'm just gonna use the move tool and you can see how if I just move this up and down it's just gonna move this and it's gonna make this look funky but if I tap the control key what that's gonna do is that's gonna activate copy mode so that'll copy all of the lines that you have selected and then you can just move your mouse up type in three feet and hit the enter key so now I've got this Wayne's coat in here so now when I apply materials I can apply a brick material down here and a like a siding material up above and you can erase out this guideline you can probably push pull these out just a bit if you want to just to give them a little bit of depth so and all I'm doing is I'm coming in here and I'm double clicking with the push pull tool active what that does is every tool has a memory to it in SketchUp so whenever I keep this tool active and I double click it'll extrude this to the same depth as the last thing that it extruded so in that way I was able to quickly come around here and give this a little bit of depth so now all we're gonna do is we're just gonna come in and we're just gonna apply materials to our faces so you can come in here and you can apply like an antique brick around the base and just to back up for just a second to get to your uh, materials those are gonna be located in your tray so just go up to window default tray and first of all make sure that show tray has been checked and also that the materials box is checked and then all you have to do is you can just come in and you can just select a material that you like and just real quickly apply it to your different faces by clicking on them so I'll apply a brick to this bottom piece and also to my chimney and I'm in the brick cladding and siding section so you click select and look for brick cladding and siding and then I'm just gonna click this white siding up above I'm gonna apply a roofing material to my roof and then you could come in here if you wanted to and apply like a wood material or something like that uh, maybe this wood veneer to the trim around your doors and your windows and then you can also apply translucent materials so I could apply a glass material to this window right here and if I really wanted to I could come in here and I could uh, add a little bit more detail with some kind of mullion pieces and stuff like that but I, I think it's okay for what we want right now and then I'm just gonna apply kind of a red material to my front door and again you could detail that out more as well but that will give you your basic house shape so that's where I'm gonna end today's video leave a comment below and let me know what you thought was this helpful to you do you like this workflow I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys uh, if you like this video please remember to click that like button down below if you're new around here remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week if you like what I'm doing on this channel please consider visiting my support me page on my website that's got some extensions you can purchase to support the show as well as links to my patreon page but in any case thank you so much for taking the time to watch this I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video thanks guys